and welcome to Assembly TV studio. My name is Riina Nieminen and I will be hosting Fireside Chat today. Fireside Chat is a new program on Assembly TV this year and we are going to interview some of the seminar speakers, vloggers and streamers. Now here with me is Tuomas Karmakallia. Welcome. Thank you, it's a pleasure to be here. So Tuomas, you are FIVR hub gobbling. What is FIVR and what does Hubgoblin do? So it's the Finnish VR Association and we have a hub in the Wiley Broadcasting Company space in Pasila with about a dozen teams working on AR and VR projects. Uh, the resident Hubgoblin, my job is basically to facilitate all the problems between communications between the teams and the organization, the FIVR board of directors, uh, the Wiley logistics, uh, equipment acquisitions, practical issues and such like. Okay, and how long have you been in FIVR? Well, it started off about two or three years back, around the time the DK1, DK2 started coming out. And officially it was actually, uh, I believe under half a year ago, it was officially made into a non-profit organization. Mm, okay. And what about when did you get interested about VR and AR? Well, that really goes back to sort of this cyberpunk childhood. <laughs> I was born in 75. Neuromancer came out in 84, the legendary book. Uh, the 80s and 90s, w there was sort of a wave of VR that sort of failed, but it was of huge interest to me. I was buying books from the university library and stuff like that, expensive books. I would <laughs> my parents would buy them for me, and I couldn't really even understand half of what I was reading at the time. I could have no access to such toys. They cost hundreds of thousands of dollars at the time. Mm. But yeah, that dream sort of laid its seed then. Okay, and when did you uh, get to like really do th this stuff? When did you start to really work with VR? Uh, two or three years ago when the FIVR sort of started um, coming together, as it were. DK1, DK2 times. Oculus, I mean. Okay, and you were talking about your cyberpunk childhood. Uh, is there something you're dreaming to accomplish in VR? Well, dreams are funny things that you catch one and it's like a bubble that pops and you need to come up with new ones quite quickly. So I've been a fairly modest dreamer, I'd say. I've been continually trying to take the stance that I need to have lots of bubbles coming at me and they can pop all the time and there's always the next thing to come. Mm, I guess I could say that I'm still looking for the big vision to, because the small c feathers keep piling up in the cap but the true prize is still somewhere waiting. Okay, and uh, what about you have been working with FIVR for now for uh, two years? Three years? Well, it's, you know, at first it was just an unofficial sort of gathering of VR aficionados. Officially, I've been working for the hub only this summer. Mm, okay. And what about, uh, what do you think is the benefits and disadvantages about VR? Well, the obvious benefits are like deep immersion and this sort of perhaps an empathy machine is sometimes mentioned that you get a much more visceral and empathic feeling from being completely disconnected with your outside world and perhaps the other side of that coin may be that this sort of immersion could have its dangerous sides in the future once people start spending you know hardcore amounts of time mm. but uh, well that's with anything. I mean, I was reading books too late at night as a kid, so... Yeah, that's true. You can have disadvantages about everything. Indeed. <laughs> uh, what about, what kind of uh, projects did you, uh, do you do right now with the FIVR? Well, there's been 
Let me think three or four projects that have already reached completion, including some games, uh, sort of Vertigo toy, there was an AR children's storybook, uh, and the Tea Time Research produced their first commercial product called the Showroom, which is sort of an architectural thing, business to business. It's the most successful product that the Fiverr team so far have clearly produced. And then there's in the pipeline, there's several games. Then there's, well, a very interesting one is for the elderly, exercise for the elderly. Okay. And that comes with sort of metrics and data on how they're moving. And mm, it's still very early days for that one, but I think it's a really promising one. And there's a handful of others like non-gaming mm, training, for example, AR training to learn how to manipulate from musical instruments to machinery. Okay, and uh, are you working in uh, which projects? Well, my first project is already complete. We uh, released Kumon, the first Finnish VR game on Steam late last year. Then this summer we took a bit of a break and made this experimental art project with a friend of mine. It has boat controls, like an old, old motorboat. Mm. And we're sort of looking to get funding for the next serious game. Okay. Um, what about, uh, is there, yeah, you were talking about the elderly and about the exercise. So uh, what is the purpose of that one? Are you going to try help elderly to move with the F F So this is a project from another team, but I can tell you a little about it. Yeah, it's, it's you know, calisthenics, uh, fitness, you know, people, the elderly tend to get uh, sedentary, not moving around enough. So they're experimenting with different sort of games in a very relaxed environment, for example, a rowboat on a lake. Or and, and they're collecting all the metrics of how the people move so they can have, for example, personal trainers to make make plans of whether they should be moving their upper body, lower body more. And it's, it's a pretty advanced thing like that. And it's probably one of the more interesting ones. There's also a handful of others that come to mind, like mm, experimental theater projects and 360 videos. But yeah, there's heaps of cool stuff coming out. Yeah, OK. And uh, you were in your seminar, all your routine are, are belong to us. You were talking about wearable tech. Uh, what kind of tech do you use in FIVR? And yeah, what kind of tech? Uh, wearable techs. Well, we're doing experiments with motion capture suits at the moment, and oh, let me think: is there any, any other wearables yet? We're we're still looking to find an AR team that really wants to get into AR helmets, and then we will acquire one of those. But we've been sort of looking at those still carefully. They're quite expensive and still very early days for that. Okay. And. Another thing I've been hoping to see somebody pick up is neural feedback, like electroencephalograms or heartbeats, that sort of thing. These would be quite easily acquired these days. They're a common place device that is pretty much available on the open market these days. Mm, okay, and could this wearable tech be some something that a common user would easily uh, use? Well, for example, there's uh, sort of sports bracelets are pretty common nowadays. These are something that could be mm, merged with the VR, AR experiences, I believe. And let's see what other... There's a lot of these drone things going on at the moment, but we're not really into that. Let me think, is there any other examples right now? I'm afraid we haven't really got the wearable tech anybody team that is really into that yet though. okay okay and uh, you were also talking about that you are living uh, living your dream now when you get to work with vr uh were, were there a moment where you were like when you found this and you were really excited like now i'm doing what i really want well there's a couple of highlights i think one highlight was i put on the headset and I launched this game called Elite Dangerous and it has, you're sitting in a cockpit and 
the hands are there and I put my hands in the same position as the avatar as it were and it does this sort of idle movement where the hand grips and I matched that and I you know <laughs> goosebumps all over and I was like oh wow and that was one and the next one was wow. probably just recently when we started messing with the mocap suits and that was very similar to that that you're starting to wave your hands around and the uh, 3D rig skeleton is following you around live and it was like another shocking moment that this this is it I'm I'm really here the future is now <laughs> uh, is there or do you see that there's where what is going to be your next shocking moment is there some that you're really trying uh, or waiting to try for what I would like to see is more shared spaces consensual spaces where people's creations are simultaneously rendered in a large space to all the users within that space. Okay. I'm not personally working towards that goal very much at the moment, but it's, I believe that is what will be a breakthrough. It's sort of like uh, there will certainly be small experiments around that in the near, near future, but the breakthrough will be when anybody can walk down a city street wearing these glasses and be seeing you know, people with decorative dragons holographically floating around them or shops pushing their advertising and you've got your ad blockers desperately trying to block that <laughs> stuff. And it's around the corner, I'm sure. Okay. Uh, what about you were talking that uh, police could use these VR things to help to find suspects. Uh, can you tell us about something uh, about that? Absolutely. I think a lot of the ideas I have actually, uh, you know, they go back to a Japanese comic called Appleseed by Masamune oh. Shiro. And it has a lot of this vision of how, how tech will be in say 30, 40 years. And some of these are a bit directly lifted from there, frankly. And, but it's, it's a clearly plausible that this will happen. There's privacy issues, but uh, when the thing I mentioned was that people who don't have a mobile phone or have a prepaid they might be despite if you or me had this privacy guard that they're not going to suck up your information but they will see that you are sort of legit you're 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 a user who's paying her bills mm. but somebody without this they're like questionable they're on the margins of society and they will be sort of targeted by law enforcement as a priority and possibly this will lead to sort of more advances in anonymity technology and people trying to work out new ways of protecting their rights, basically. Mm. And what about you already mentioned it, but yeah, isn't it this hurting like people's privacy? Well, I think it's sort of been a given ever since the internet really was born <laughs> from military technology that, you know, <laughs> Uh, to how would I put it without being being uh, let's keep it polite that <laughs> our, our bots are hanging out the window and for all <laughs> to see already so it's more of a question that the Finnish government is sort of like always late to the train that oh everybody else is doing it maybe we should be doing it too mm. okay and uh, Finnish virtual reality associations uh, has acquired two 115,000 in funding to start building VR development and hubs. Uh, how many hubs do you have? So the Pasila hub is the first one and it's really only starting to get up to full speed now. Uh, there's been talk that we would ramp up from this sort of very free-for-all, no strings attached system to start expanding to actual accelerator programs, funding, that sort of thing. But that's sort of the next stage and we're looking for people from around Helsinki I mean outside of Helsinki to start basically what they need is you know this burning ambition mm. and preferably some very cheap space preferably free space to work in and start collecting their teams in their respective cities mm. yeah we're hoping to expand still I think one of our mm, primary Inspirations has been the IGDA Finnish chapter, which has exploded in the last 10 years. It started off as a very small event in Helsinki, and now it's in every major city in Finland. 
Okay, and uh, what if uh, I would be interested in joining FIVR? Where can I find you? How can I join you? The webpage FIVR.fi has a registration page where anybody can freely become a member of the non-profit organization. This will send you information about our open events where we usually showcase Finnish developers or have guests from overseas and it gives you access to the Slack channel where we also have you know, the more intense conversations going on and there's even I believe the developer side, the VR hub side is open for anybody to actually see our how we're doing stuff there and so forth. Okay, and uh, how much do I have to know VR before that I can join FIVR? Oh, it's absolutely open for anybody. Like. Uh, we could say that we're consumer facing as well like we've been running this VR zone here for with uh, eight vibe stations and we're basically saying anybody who's interested in even playing games or uh, interested in possible systems of uh, open events arcades or if they want to actually get into the game themselves uh, and start developing they want to showcase their own work everybody's welcome oh, okay. Uh, thank you, Thomas, for being here with us on Fireside Chat. My pleasure. Thank you, too. And for the viewers, remember to go check FIVR.fi if you're interested reading about it, joining it maybe. And thank you for watching Fireside Chat.